long before Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas brought the issue into the national spotlight. McKinnon laid the groundwork that helped make harassment illegal in the workplace. The Supreme Court accepted her theory on harassment in 1986. But while almost all feminists applaud her work here, many oppose her efforts to outlaw pornography. Her new book, Only Words, makes her case against protecting pornography as free speech. And I'm pleased to have her here to talk about that and some other issues more topical that she is interested in. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be back oh, tonight, John. Good to have you. Let, let me turn now, as, as powerful as that subject is, to the uh, interest of yours, which is pornography and the battle you have made against pornography. Only words is a series of lectures. Yes. Um, Potter Stewart, as you know, coined one of the probably more famous phrases to mm -hmm. come out of a Supreme Court decision, which is, I don't know what pornography is, but I know it when I can't define it, but I know it mm -hmm. when I see it. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you define it? Well, Andrea Dworkin, uh, the feminist writer, and I have been working on this subject, as you know, for right. over a decade. And we actually have a legal definition which has been embodied in law at various points, although those laws have been struck down, but not conclusively. And we define it as uh, sexual, sexually explicit materials, graphic, sexually explicit materials that subordinate women through pictures or words. In other words, pornography is what it does. It subordinates women. It's not about what it, its ideas are or what you think when you see it. And it's not about any kind of trickiness and identification. It's about what the pornography industry makes. Only it makes it. And only it does what it does. Only it promotes rape. Only it requires rape to make it. And how, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some sense of understanding of how do you, uh, what makes this pornography and make this not pornography. And is subordination of women the test? Yes. You know. uh, it has to be, first of all, sexually explicit. Right. Uh, and it has to be graphic, not suggested, not implied, not sort of, but not a little seen. bit titillating, but seen, yes, explicitly showing sexual acts. And in addition, in addition, it has to actually subordinate women. And what does that by mean, subordinate proof. women? Well, our law has several ways that can be done. If a woman is coerced into making the materials, she is being subordinated. And she has a claim against the materials that were made through her rape, through her abuse through her her molestation and violation. Forced to do it in, in what way? Well, as, as for example, uh, the woman who was called Linda Lovelace sure. uh, was abducted, coerced, forced to it look as though she was having a wonderful time in the film Deep Throat. Um, that w one way of being coerced is for somebody to put a gun to your head, which you don't see. Uh, it's off the screen and yeah. say, smile yeah. or I'll kill you. Yeah, but these That's are other crimes forced. too. These are other crimes to yes, force someone to do those kinds of things. Yes, but the pornography is protected speech, Charlie. It doesn't matter what's done to the woman in it. It is protected speech. That's the point. And there's a $10 billion a year but incentive to, now to do that. But to force someone to do something against their will with a gun or some other right. coercion it's right. against some law. That's right. And it's done on a daily basis with total impunity in this country, in large part because there's massive profits okay. to be made and the women are made worthless That's by the doing of yeah. it. Let's assume somebody wasn't forced. Let's assume somebody, for whatever reason, wanted to do it for, as an income provider to engage in a pornographic film. she won't be getting the money. The pimp, those okay. pimping will be getting Let's assume she the will, money. though. Then move to the second leg of the definition of what makes it pornography and how we see it and how do you define well, a she, woman being she subordinated. she won't be bringing a legal action um, if she doesn't, if she wasn't ex coerced or subordinated in any way to make it. Hmm. So she's out of the loop. Right. Okay, you've got this very abstract case here of the freely choosing women. Right. Uh, for example, as if you've raised a freely choosing black person who decides, you know, now's my lucky day. Today I'm going to choose to be employed cleaning toilets. Okay, that's the equivalent. All right, you call that freedom. Now it's called freedom when a woman chooses to do it and it's sex because people believe that sex is free. However, you know, what pornography is, is selling yourself for sex. Um, and, you know, the idea of money is supposed to make it free. Well, usually when people have sex with another person and choose to do it, they're not being mm. paid. It's but, free because you're not being paid. In other words, this is an arm of prostitution. But I understand your principal thrust to be, okay. uh, in terms of what, in these lectures, what your principal thrust is, is the violence that pornography, A, does to those people who engage in it. Uh, but secondly, what you think it does to people who who read it because it creates an incentive for violence against women by people who read it. Am yes. I wrong on that? No, you're right on that. Okay, and what is the... Women and children are hurt to make it, 
and not surprisingly, those who enjoy what you had to hurt a woman or child to make, those who enjoy it, who masturbate to it, who experience their sexuality and relationship to it, yeah also live that out on other women and children around them in a whole variety of ways and there's a massive body of evidence on that. Where do you and your First Amendment friends and the law schools across America who respect you for your work come to loggerheads on the First Amendment issue? Where do you divide with them? Well, Constitutional scholars and others who part company with you while they may be with you and you may be with them on most other issues of I think that, that, you know, that first of all, uh, the women and children in the materials are not very real to them, uh, and their abuse is not very real to them, and they are real to me. I've talked to hundreds of them, and I know what it took to make those materials. And so, the ideas about the First Amendment uh, are not designed to deal with what it took to make the materials. Um, the silencing, the aggression, uh, the whole backdrop of inequality is just not part of how people have thought about the First Amendment. When they think about the First Amendment and freedom of speech, they start with the speech. It already exists. Right, right, exactly. Right? You know. so, so the legal jump you want to make is that in is, this case of pornography, we have to consider what brought those people to the being put yes. in a magazine, the unequal on a film. conditions. Um, all the, the inequality generally. So hate the, literature would have not have that element for you? It doesn't, generally. Uh, that is, you don't generally have to lynch a black person. To, um, they don't generally make hate literature about lynching yeah. by yeah. taking a black person, lynching them, and doing it. They do, however, make pornography of women of color by taking them and lynching mm -hmm. them and making it into sex. My impression is that most scholars part company with you in terms of what you, simply because they think that, that it, it is censorship to, yes. to in of fact, ideas, prevent the selling fact. of ideas, to yes. prevent the selling of pornography. Yes. And that, therefore, their sense of the Bill of Rights and their sense of their reading of the Constitution says that that, that as, as obnoxious as it might be, mm -hmm. you know, if it doesn't violate you know, community standards of obscenity, then it should not be stopped. That, that is their view. And, uh, you know, they and why are... does that offend you? Well, I, I'm not offended by it, um, and offensiveness, you know, is, is not my issue. Why do, uh, why does uh, but that... we are all discriminated against by it. Um, in other words, that particular view, as applied to pornography, uh, creates a setting uh, in which women are maintained as second-class citizens. What it means is that um, our torture, our violation, our abuse, is when those things are done to us, both in the making of it and through its use, that is transformed in this First Amendment fundamentalism uh, in, by some magical alchemy uh, into, quote, an idea. It's not an idea. It's a reality. It's a practice. It is being done. Everything about it is being done. It's done to make it, and it's done through its use. It's not, quote, just an idea. Of course, all practices embody ideas and express ideas. Uh, when you murder someone, you express the idea you want them dead. When you rape someone, you are expressing the idea what? That you have contempt yeah, but, but for you that can't, person. But, That's but, an but idea. No, okay, it expresses the, an idea. Yeah. Right? But, but, All but, discrimination but expresses no, an no, idea no, of second class no citizenship. One who, who stands, no one who stands on the First Amendment would suggest to you that they believe that murder is an expression of an idea that should be protected. That's very interesting because their theory of the First Amendment doesn't explain why. I mean, <laughs> take, you, but, for example, but, sexual and racial harassment. It's mostly words. 85, 90 percent of it is. Right. All it is but is words. It expresses the idea of inequality. But yet, it is civilly actionable as discrimination on the basis of sex and on the basis of race. Because the, the words, reason, have, because the words have, uh, have conduct. The words mm. imply conduct. No, they are understood implicitly as conduct to the point where the, the, the First Amendment advocates have never said if someone says to a woman, sleep, a student, sleep with me and I'll give you, you know, an A, right. for example, right. that that's First that Amendment protected speech. No one says that. No one says that. Right. But why not? There's nothing in their theory of speech that says it shouldn't be. It expresses an idea. Okay, now make a $10 billion a year industry out of that, including saying things like, rape her, get her, she wants it. Some would retreat to this argument that w that that you cannot distinguish in pornography between those th <laughs> that somehow there is an expression of some kind of art or some kind of expression of art. 
-hmm. therefore. And that if you, in, you know, and for example, you sometimes might very well find yourself in, in association with Jesse Helm, say. Well, it's interesting in that we term, never have been since for not, 10 years not on any people issue have been in saying terms of this what, to us. Yeah, you, and Jesse Helms has not beat a path to our door, uh, nor has the right generally um, or uh, the he, Christians yeah, or because, fundamentalists it, or any of them. And, and if therefore, if he would might want to, and, and the issue for him, for example, and I don't want to speak for him, mm -hmm. the issue for him has to do with government funding in many cases. But at the same well, time, yes. he might find, uh, say, the Robert Maplethorpe uh, mm -hmm. work much admired in many circles, mm -hmm. uh, pornographic to him. Okay, and but certainly offensive up to his standards. Okay. And would what want to offensive? censor it. Right. Would what want is to censor it because he says it violates his own sense of, of um, Judeo-Christian standard. Well, sure. That isn't our standard. Right. Uh, our standard is our women and children or men being hurt on the basis of sex. By the... By Can you prove that someone is being hurt by this? For example, a white only sign. Right. It's only words, but it segregates. Right. For example, cross burnings. Yeah. They terrorize, they intimidate, they segregate, they do things. Right. For example, lynchings. A lynching is to be watched. You've got a dead body hanging in the square after the thing has been accomplished. It expresses something, it expresses white supremacy. It says, stay in your place, keep down. Okay, now, we have a pornography industry that does all that through a technologically sophisticated means, through pictures and words. That is all it is, and that is all it does. It's the same thing. And let, let those me, are actual acts. In, in, that isn't what, quote, unquote, offends somebody. Charlie, if you heard a woman screaming in the next room by being bounced off walls by a man she lives with, are you offended? I mean, that isn't what you say to yourself. You're experiencing the enactment of an abuse. You're witnessing it. You feel it. You hear her scream. You think, I've got to do something about this. I'm saying, I mean, that's what I experience when I see pornography. A woman is being hurt here. She's being violated. She's being used. And on top of it, I get to know that someone's enjoying this. I mean, on top of, of, of her humiliation, there's going to be men experiencing their own sexuality and this being protected as a constitutional right and called a form of entertainment. Let me get to a couple of points before I go. When you look at those societies and those countries that suppress pornography, right. what, what's the, what can we learn from them, if anything, positive? Well, and when you compare it with those countries that don't, and right. that in fact are more open about pornography than right. this society is, is that society different than ours? Well, on, pornography on was even more pervasive, if you can believe it, um, in, in what was called Yugoslavia prior to this genocide. Uh, pornography saturated the place. And what it did is it created a population of men pre-primed sexually to enjoy inflicting torture. In other words, it created an army just waiting. Uh, to commit a genocide like is being committed here uh, and, and when under orders to do it and enjoy it. Um, we, people talk about Scandinavia a lot. Uh, what's happened there is that you know women simply have ceased reporting rapes. Uh, they say that you know... Because you believe in, in, in pornography the conventional wisdom there is that the pornography is an incitement to rape. Well it is. Right. Um, and everybody knows that it is. Uh, that it promotes a climate in which, in which rape and child abuse and sexual harassment and battering flourish, but also in which women don't report and it. And therefore, if you make the le leap that some people would like to suggest that violence also incites people to violence, violence that we see on television and in the movies incites people to violence, should there also be some censorship of violence on television and in film because it also incites to violence. I mean, in many ways, it's a separate issue. Although, if there's going to be a lot of violence, there will be a lot of sexual violence. Okay, so but should but it be suppressed? It's a separate issue because this is about the same inequality. Argument. It's about what makes people pornography about inequality. Citizens. Yes, and so is hate crime. So you want to make sure that you distinguish any arguments that are made about suppressing violence because it it, it yes, on television. I do that. You want to make that separate, and you do, do not that. want to join those people who want to somehow stop the uh, reflection of violence on I film and in television because, well, because it leads to 
further, it leads people to commit violent acts. Well, you don't have um, a 14th Amendment basis for doing that, and you don't have a whole history of claiming that this is an equal society, and you don't have that being differentially targeted at subordinated groups in the way that you do here. I mean, what I particularly am critical of is the worldwide approach to pornography from the standpoint of criminal law, that is, by empowering the government. Um, what I think is important here is to empower the survivors, the victims of these atrocities, and give them human rights, the laws that they can use in their own hands, not by government engaging in censorship, um, but by the individuals but who are hurt. But don't they have those laws? Own. Don't they have no. access to some? Well, I'm talking about the United States now. Not against There's the pornography. There is no access we don't. against a person who is forcing you to commit acts against your will. Not against the pornography, which is the reason why the acts are being forced but on you. But against the producer of the film, you do, don't you? No. None. Not, not if, for the if, film. If, if the man, film goes if a, on if forever. If a man comes into your house to, tomorrow night and right. sit with a gun, right. you know, and, and forces you, it, w and whatever takes he pictures and, of and takes pictures of uh -huh. it, you have an action against not that against person. Not against the pictures. You, but you have an action against him. But not him. the pictures. The pictures are protected speech. They go on forever. So he could then go out and show those. Somebody yes. else could show those pictures of you yes. being submitted against your will yes. with a gun. As and they're not protected at all. There's not a single case Even out there where anyone stopped it. It was shown in the commission of, what, of a crime. Right. Rape. That's right. Okay. Let me ask one last quick thing. Bring me up to date on sexual harassment. What's changed? Because I'm changing gears real fast. Fine. Uh, and I'm out of time. What's changed bec uh, today? And where is the trend of the law? Uh, and what's uh, all the attention that it received, as I mentioned, because of the Clarence Thomas hearings? Well, a lot more women have brought complaints um, and taken real courage from Professor Hill's example, even though uh, she didn't get the result that many people thought uh, should have occurred there. Um, what's also interesting is that more people now say that they believe her uh, than was said at the time. Initially, she was, she was testifying. I think what this is is that uh, more uh, people have had a chance to really reflect on it yeah. and don't feel so under the gun. I also am under the impression that there's a dramatic change in terms of corporate recognition and corporate there responsibility is. about this. There is. Uh, a lot more people are serious. Uh, they, they know, because they realize the consequences of not being yes, serious. Yes, and they could be called on the carpet. And I think also that uh, it isn't just the threat of action, but you know, as it is, I think, too, with the pornography situation, that having a law is very educational. Um, and once it's realized that the law is serious, as was clear, um, even though it wasn't a legal proceeding in the usual sense, um, uh, with uh, Professor Hill's testimony, uh, the fact that there could be real consequences uh, made a lot of people a lot smarter. Uh, it educated them greatly uh, in terms of actually taking it seriously in a sincere way. Catherine A. McKinnon, professor of law, only words, which is about pornography and, and a series of lectures she gave at Yale, or where was it? They were given at Princeton, at, Princeton. at the Gauss uh, Lectures in Criticism. Great to have you here. Great to be with Thank you, Charlie. You. We'll be right back. Tony Trabert is here talking about the U.S. Open. Also, Ralph Nader talking about how safe for our airlines. Back in a moment. <laughs>